Hey everyone, in this training video, we're gonna go over what not to do in a snow plow. Top mistakes we've seen from new operators. Check this out. Hey everyone, in this video, we're gonna cover top mistakes. You know, top five things that I think I've seen uh, from new snowplow operators and kind of mistakes I've made. You know, first thing I'll say, uh, I am not an expert. Uh, I've snowplowed a lot, but uh, I'm still learning myself. So I'm just gonna share things I've seen uh, and I've heard from others. But I'll also, you know, a lot of things I love about our videos is you guys don't hesitate to comment in with your own tips and tricks. So please put comments below on top things you've seen. Uh, the second piece is I really want to shout out and thanks to Precision Landscape here in Hastings, Minnesota. Uh, they're the ones that are partnering with us on this video uh, to allow us to use one of their trucks, one of their properties. So uh, with that said, let's get into it. Now, number one, I think is probably the top mistake or most important thing is just knowing your site, uh, knowing where you're plowing. I've seen too many new operators go into a property and just not understand where everything is. You, you don't want that first time to be when you're actually plowing an event. So if it's a commercial property for sure, try and get out there when there is no snow. Um, but this also goes into prepping uh, before snow even flies. A good commercial contractor will go out and mark their lines or at least if there's areas that are get really covered, they're gonna wanna put flags, put something in there to kind of know um, and then have a plan for that site. Along that same line as, as having a plan when you're plowing is, you know, where are you plowing to? You wanna know where the drainage points are for that property. You know, understand that snow, you're gonna pile up over the entire season, well, it's gotta melt. And you obviously don't want, you don't wanna plow this all over a drain or an area that would be draining all of that in the spring. Um, so have an idea of where that needs to go. You know, obviously you're gonna, if you got a property or even whatever, there's a building, you're trying to pull snow away. So that's where having a plan um, and understanding where the snow needs to end up. So have a plan with that. Some other things, just as I'm thinking about it, when you're, you know, things we talk about plan, um, other basics I've seen that I've made the own mistake is just making sure you start, if you have a long night of plowing, make sure you're uh, fully fueled. Make sure the truck, it, hey, three in the morning is not a great time to have to go get refueled. Um, so make sure you have that. And then things like wind direction. You know, like today's a good example. We kind of have blizzard conditions here in Minnesota. Uh, you don't want to necessarily, you want to try and use the wind as much as possible. That doesn't always work into your plan. Sometimes you can't control, but if you can, you know, have that wind, you don't want to plow an area and the wind's going to blow all that right back over. So with some of that, I want to show with site plan uh, here. Again, we're in a Hastings, Minnesota site, but things, a lot of times the curbs are really well if they're painted yellow. Uh, most property owners will keep make good, take care of their uh, property and have that. But again, when it's snow covered, I can still see edges of yellow out here, but I wanna show you some things too, is understanding so where the curbs are, uh, where telephone poles are. And a good example is, you know, we were plowing earlier and this is a good example. We were filming, so probably not the best for us, but we covered up a, so we have a telephone or a light pole there and the bases are large concrete. Now those are normally yellow. So if you see, and hopefully, yeah, the trolley's gonna get a video of that. You'll see how it's covered with snow. What that should look like, is this one. So you see this pillar here has got that bright yellow base there. Uh, that's ideal. So even in that side over there where we were plowing earlier, we were in a practice area. You wanna try and keep those clear. The last thing you wanna do is cover up any of your markers. Uh, we're in an area right now that we don't plow. This is just kind of an abandoned part of the mall. So it's a great, we use it as a practice area. Um, the other areas I'll show you here. You see some areas that we know, and uh, hopefully you can see this on camera. You see the little red flags that are over there. Uh, typically, you're gonna wanna mark your corners uh, so you can see right now, there is zero, I can't see the curb at all there. You know it's there, and you definitely don't want to find it at three in the morning when you're plowing. So having your property marked where those curb lines are is gonna help you immensely later, uh, just understanding where, uh, where those are. So very important ahead of time to know your property and come out and mark it like that. The final thing with a plan, I would say, is also understanding uh, when to come out for a, for a plow, especially for commercial accounts. Um, a lot of it, you, yeah, you may want to wait till the end. However, if you are getting a lot of snow, 
trucks, any, any equipment you use is going to have its limits on how much it can plow. So, you know, a, a standard pickup, you know, six inches is going to be easy. Say, I mean, under, I'd say 10 inches or so. Um, but you want to try and do it a little bit in layers. If you wait to the very end, um, it's really, it's just a lot tougher to push that. So it's going to take a few passes. Most commercial accounts, you're going to go out after like two inches anyways, uh, just to keep up with that and per the contract, I mean, whatever the contract's going to say, but just having a plan when, and then you're going to do a final cleanup when everything's passed. So just have a plan on when you're going to go out. Don't, uh, you know, don't wait till you're too late to it. And then you're not able to really, it's going to just be really tough to get through it. Okay. So number two mistake I've seen. And this applies, I think, to everything. Construction equipment we do as well. Speed. Speed is not your friend when you're starting. So as with everything, start slow. I get it. New guys, new operators want to go in there and they want to show off to their boss. Uh, but you need to work up to that. Uh, I'd rather you be slow and efficient, safe, than just going like really crazy fast out there. So. Just start slow. You'll take your time, learn the property. Part of that comes into knowing you'll learn that property more, but it also, you know, we talk about planning too, is understanding where the manhole covers are. You know, this goes back into the number one where your plan is. You may find those initially. So, you know, going too fast, and I'll show you, you get some guys, I'm gonna do a windrow, I'm gonna do one here. But if I just go like a really fast, or you feel how I'm just, you're not, I'm jumping over ice chunks there and it's just, you're not as in control. So that's why nice and slow and steady back up here. I will say for a new operator, the time uh, from a speed element, usually backing in reverse is when you can make up some of that time. That's primarily, uh, you're obviously not, there's no risk of anything being your plow. You do have risk of backing into things. So uh, I wouldn't say that's the, in a, during the day when businesses are open, you're probably not gonna wanna do that. In the middle of the night, if you have good lighting behind you, that's something that's not quite as big a deal. You'll see right now, if I go slower here, and this is starting, it's just a lot easier. You see how I'm not bouncing around or not. You also get, with the winds out here, you notice my first run there, it was blowing all right up over my cab into my or into the glass and everything like that so that's why speed speed is really important start slow i don't think uh, any contractor out there any boss is going to be upset if you start slow and work your way up take care of the equipment okay uh my number three mistake that i've seen uh is really just distraction uh distraction um not being focused on what you're doing this gets really repetitive so as you do more and more plowing you just get into a little bit of a uh, I want to say a false sense of security is when you get going. So I've seen guys with their phones right there or they're mounted up there and they're plowing and they're doing like, you know, five different things. Stay focused. You are operating a very heavy piece, you know, a, a truck, a wheel loader, whatever you're in, uh, and you're out in the a public area. So you want to take your time and be focused. The other big thing on that number three is fatigue. Don't be afraid. And I, I know the kind your boss, whoever, they, you got to get accounts done. But that also means you gotta do it safely. I think that's the, the given. So what I recommend initially is, you know, if you're not well rested, make sure you're getting that time and don't be afraid to tell your boss if uh, you are just out of it. If you're starting to feel sleepy, take a break. Go get some coffee uh, and come back to it. But I would say distracted, fatigue, all those are my top three mistakes I see way too much. Number four, blade angle. So this is where uh, understanding your, the blade and the angle you wanna have on it. The biggest thing I will tell you on that is this is why wind rowing and even when you go into a V formation is really handy, is if you hit that, if there is an obstruction in the ground, if that blade is a little bit at an angle, you're gonna get one piece that's gonna hit it and it's either gonna take that blow and the hydraulic, the, the, the plow itself will take some of that or a lot of times I've seen it where one piece will ride up and then that rail is on there, it'll slide across it versus you hitting it perpendicular. If you hit an obstruction perpendicular like that, that whole plow, it will break. There's a, a spring in there, uh, but it's gonna be abrupt. So having that angle a little bit uh, is very important. You know, it's very similar, you know, we do videos, we've had bulldozer, how to use a bulldozer, but we also encourage uh, you having a little bit of a angle on your, 
uh, blade on when you're with a dozer because it also takes that off for the, uh, I call it the roller coaster effect, but it, it's very similar in with a snowplow is you want to have it at an angle, you are straight in the ground, but it's going to ride if there is an obstruction in the ground. The other thing I'll say with that is uh, when you're traveling, uh, always have that blade at an angle. That just allows wind uh, airflow to get into the engine for a pickup truck. And it also, same thing, if you have one tip down there, it's going to protect just most of that blade where it will have a way to rebound a little bit if you were to potentially hit some kind of obstacle. Okay, so that's number four is a blade angle. Uh, the angle of your blade and just understanding physics and where the machine, the thing I didn't say there with blade angle, you know, understanding that it's where it's gonna push. A V formation will push all that forward, uh, but it can only push so much and then to the left or right will wind row it over and then understanding how much, you know, that's why you gotta aim you know, if you're only, if, if you got about a foot of snow, you may be a foot into the blade on that windrow. Otherwise you're gonna keep spilling it over on the side and it's just not efficient. Okay, the final piece, number five, and this really just applies to commercial accounts, uh, keep an accurate log. Uh, I did some commercial accounts when I first started. Uh, I was subcontracting for another guy and I found myself at the end or the owner or the contractor, they have to report, they have people hiring them for this project. So they want uh, accurate records of it. So always in the beginning, you know, when you show up to a property, make sure that you record when you're arriving at the property, what the site conditions are, what, uh, you know, how much snow is out there. But record all those conditions because you're going to have to uh, report that. You're going to have to turn that in to say how long you're on the site, how much you plowed, how many inches are there. It also helps you with efficiency over time. If you do the same account over time, you can hopefully get better at it. It's one of those things where you find more efficient ways to do it. And if you're logging, hey, I was able to plow six inches here in a two hours for this lot, whereas you know, last week it took me two and a half. You're kind of saving some time there. So that would be number five is just keeping an accurate log. Okay, everyone, so those are my top five mistakes, things I've seen. Uh, now, I wanna hear from you guys. Uh, it, really, what I love about our channel and you guys that are watching these videos, there's not a lack of knowledge out there. So please share, for any guys that do this, put down below, what's your other, what are some of the top ones you've seen? What are comments on the, the stuff we gave? Um, a big shout out and thanks again to Precision Landscape here in Hastings, Minnesota for letting us use one of their trucks and one of their accounts to do this. Um, and we'll continue to do more videos like this uh, with your guys' support. Thanks a lot, we'll see you in the next one.